Story mode. Welcome to this week's episode of Story Mode, where we're speaking with gaming founders, executives, and leaders about the industry and their insights. I'm your host, Olya Kalushne, and today we have Julia Palatowska, co-founder and CEO of Dorian. Julia started her career in PR and then moved into gaming at G5 Games, where she was VP of Business Development and Licensing. Later, she was an investor at London Venture Partners. During her career, she's been writer, investor, advisor, and now co-founder and CEO. Julia founded Dorian in 2019. Dorian is a platform built for creators and cosplayers to stream, connect with their fans, and monetize their content. Hi, Julia. Welcome to the show. Excited to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. Awesome. Let's dive straight in. What inspired you to go into gaming and what ultimately inspired you to start Dorian specifically? I was very lucky to join uh, my first uh, games company in the early days of mobile. Uh, the company's name is G5. It's uh, still a um, growing a successful business. I, uh, I joined this company because it was like it was very early in my professional life and it was a very exciting opportunity it was a fantastic team uh, we were all uh, very young and ambitious and i spent uh, seven years with this company we built a successful mobile game development and publishing business we eventually got listed in the nasdaq in stockholm so it was a very fast learning experience, very fast growth. We grew uh, significantly with the uh, mobile game grow growth and it was like life-changing for me. And I'm coming from Ukraine, from a pretty humble background. And honestly, like I can't express enough how life-changing it has been joining games for me since G5 until now. A lot thanks to the fast growth of this industry, uh, fast uh, changes in technology and so much learning. When I joined G5, it was uh, early days of the Apple App Store and then later uh, Google Play. And I benefited hugely from this democratization of technology and also distribution. We could reach users anywhere in the world outside of Eastern Europe. And it was, again, life-changing for me, I think for many people at our company and for many small uh, mobile game developers who joined at that time. There was an article back like seven years ago of how many millionaires mobile game distribution with app stores has produced and it's a very significant number from like nothing to being able to put your games and your vision in front of uh, gamers everywhere in the world and um, I think that uh, ultimately what we're doing at Dorian and what is inspired Dorian is to democratize this access to game development further and to provide this access to individual creators who we are serving and uh, who now can make games without any coding and doing without any engineers, without uh, any uh, preliminary investment. And I'm very proud to say that we are succeeding in our mission uh, and our first stage uh, of growth has been really exciting and successful so far. We have um, enabled many first-time game creators to make games, make money out of them and reach the audiences that they would not normally be able to reach. So speaking about Dorian, what, what kind of games can creators on the platform create? Is there a specific genre they're focusing on and is there a specific audience that they're delivering it for? Um, sure. So Dorian was started with writers as the first creator audience in mind. We started Dorian looking at the success of the some story-based games that I was very much into and I still am. Uh, we saw growth uh, of such yeah. games as episode choices and we knew that um, these games are very popular. It's a very appealing medium to many people because they're somewhere in in between playing a game and reading a novel it's 
very broad female demographic that enjoys this kind of experiences. However, we knew that all of this content was produced by studios and basically the economics were not in favor of the creators who were making this for uh, obvious reasons. And our initial vision was why don't we enable fiction writers, this big creator class of fiction writers, uh, to make games. Uh, because fiction is not monetizing. It's nearly impossible to monetize fiction. There are some people who do, but these are like 1%. They're lucky to get either traditional publishing deals, or maybe they take many years to build a brand using self-publishing. But it's still tiny, tiny percent because of the distribution and monetization model. Monetization is usually prepaid. Um, you need to put a lot of marketing dollars into building your brand to convince someone to pay for your book upfront. Uh, whereas uh, what we are providing is free to play medium. Anyone can start playing and then decide whether they want to support the creator financially or not in free to play game model. So. We thought, what if we enable all of these fiction writers to make games and to tap into uh, free-to-play game ec economics that um, myself and my team um, know so well. All of us are coming from the game background. And uh, that was the initial vision. And we started with that and our first wave of creators uh, have been uh, fiction writers. But then we expanded as we started learning and iterating the product and seeing what uh, gets the most traction with uh, the fans. We learned and we were surprised by some other creator classes that have been joining us. In addition to fiction writers, we now have artists who are a very important part of our community. And we also now have cosplayers who are uh, also fantastic game creators, as it turned out, and they're producing phenomenal games. So that's been our journey so far, and uh, I can probably speak about it forever, but I'm happy to hear more of your questions and dive into some of this. What do you stand for? as a company? Our mission is to enable creators uh, to produce games, to produce interactive experiences that are more interactive, more appealing, more engaging to their fans than what they have been able uh, to do so far. And even more importantly, we want to change the economics for our creators because all of these creators who I mentioned, fiction writers, artists, cosplayers, they have been Many of them have been producing a lot of great content that people engage with, that people enjoy, uh, that has like thousands of reads or thousands of views, but it's not um, monetizing. But our strong belief is that as more and more people uh, are consuming UGC so much that these creators, these individual content creators deserve to make money for their content and as any efficient business, uh, they should be able to make money from the consumers of their content rather than some third parties, how it happens right now. It's not an efficient business model and it's going to change. So I see that us as one of the companies solving uh, creator ec economics, creator economy, because the number of indiv individual creators are growing, the number of their fans is growing exponentially. There was a recent report by a deconstructor of fans how UGC apps uh, have been overtaking mobile games. We see ourselves in the middle of that, uh, in, the, in between games and UGC platforms. And we have made tremendous progress as a team as a, and as a platform in helping individual creators monetize their content or monetizing UGC games in other words. And we want to enable more creators to earn money from um, this content that many of them are uh, so good at producing and being this platform where they can build fandoms directly and communicate with their fans directly, get financial support uh, from their fans directly without 
um, sort of agency or tastemakers uh, in the industry, because as we are working with all of these phenomenal creators, we see how much more new content is uh, introduced, how many new voices we can bring to the industry and how many new creators get, get a shot in being discovered in being supported in building a business out of this, which is traditionally very hard due to socioeconomic situations of many of these creators due to being explicitly or implicitly discriminated traditionally in the industry due to not being able to get a job in the games industry again, because um, it's harder, um, you have to prove yourself and some of the projects that are doing extremely well on Dorian, I don't think that they can, that they would fly in the traditional studio. And again, it's just because there is um, uh, more and more fragmentation going on and you can, as an individual creator, you can be happy and successful serving potentially your smaller, uh, but very passionate niche that wouldn't work out economically for a studio. We're so happy to be this platform that makes this happen. How do you go about attracting and then selecting the right set of creators for the platform? We are an open platform for everyone. Everyone can uh, create on Dorian. Um, there are no limitation. We are, we do have various growth pro programs for our creators and we are um, using um, analytics that allow, uh, that allows us to understand what's uh, performing, what fans want. We're always open to being surprised and we are constantly surprised uh, by what fans like and engage with. And then we are, of course, searching for content that we see uh, gets the most traction. And uh, at the same time, we are we have built some very efficient processes of how we can work with many creators as a small team because uh, our creators have just all of the tools available for them. We provide creation tools, we provide collaboration tools so creators can start making can make teams and many of our creators are um, professionalizing and collaborating with each other using our collaboration tools, we have revenue sharing tools between creators that creators get to control. We have monetization and analytics tools that are provided to creators entirely for free. They can launch their games and they can see uh, their own engagement and um, adjust just like any game product manager using this uh, analytics tools. We have live ops tools and community tools for creators to work with their fandoms directly. And none of this requires coding and engineering. This allows us to uh, see what's working. This allows creators to see what's working. They can always apply for our growth uh, support and featuring opportunities using their own uh, data. And uh, it's been um, extremely exciting to create this ecosystem and also enable, of course, creators to collaborate with each other and actually distribute roles for creation, self-marketing, um, supporting each other, doing revenue sharing between each other. We also have um, any of the games that is made on Dorian can automatically be, be streamed on the platform. And this really helps our creators uh, be very self-reliant. You talked about challenges that an individual creators may have with actually earning meaningful amount of revenue. Why is it challenging and in the grand scheme of things? What are the challenges there? It's because most of the UGC platforms have very limited monetization opportunities for creators. You can make some money on some of the platforms from ads attributed to your content. However, ads work at very high volume. So this benefits only the biggest creators, say on YouTube, maybe TikTok, but of course, TikTok has issues with attributing ads to specific videos because at the moment they're not embedded in the videos. So with ads, a monetization is possible for the largest creators with a lot of volume, but this is a very small percentage, right? It also 
doesn't really serve fiction creators. Usually it works for video creators. Then uh, if you want to sell something in a non-game format, for example, if you are a fiction creator, as I mentioned, you have to be able to sell something up front, which is extremely hard without a big name or a big license. And uh, then uh, other platforms, most of the UGC platforms just do not have good monetization methods for, uh, for fans to, to spend money on their content. If you think about it, because again, like with ads, as a creator, you have no control of ads. Usually ads have nothing to do with your content. You, uh, ads are very hard to understand. Uh, ad monetization is hard to understand even for the companies, let alone individual creators, right? So this is very much outside of your control and it requires a lot of volume. Then uh, majority of platforms just do not really have any fan monetization methods. For example, TikTok is struggling with this. They have a lot of fans, you have huge engagement, but uh, pretty much no monetization outside of maybe live donations. And then it's just like the monetization for UGC is not efficient. But what we see with Dorian and where we developed the most value for our creators is monetization in free-to-play game format for story-based games, plus some additional mechanics, such as, for example, dating scenes, points-based systems, and so on. So with this, you unlock fan monetization. And if people like your game, they will uh, convert into paying customers at some point um, because they do not have to, uh, to pay upfront. So it's very easy to start. Thanks to this, we see majority of um, even no-name creators um, earning at least something on the platform, whereas in a different format, it wouldn't be possible. So basically, we are marrying free-to-play game monetization with storytelling um, or artistic uh, storytelling. And this just works. This is inclusive of uh, many more people which is exciting. Uh, for example, in some of the top games that we see produced on the platform, we see something like 15 month conversion into paying customers. One of the top games uh, got grew from 15% conversion up to 30% in just like last three months. I'm extremely excited to see this. Our vision, and I think we're getting very close, uh, some of our creators are getting very close to this, is that we would love for our creators to uh, start getting growth capital uh, from Sandla, say, or even venture capital at some point. And I think that some of them are actually getting closer to this. More and more creators started discussing potential advertising and whatnot. And I think that um, some of them are getting to uh, the right uh, numbers, uh, close to uh, the numbers that might work for even for collaborating with a company like yours. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I think that the whole theme around professionalizing smaller creators, it's, it's a very common thread, right? Like when you think about Roblox, Crazy Games, Pocky, it's a, what I'm hearing is a very similar thread. You get a lot of talented people coming onto the platform and you have a subset of those people who then ready to turn that into their probably like full-time profession, right? And then it's as a platform, then what tooling you give them both on the building side, but then also on the revenue side, on the monetization side. So it's, it's interesting to hear that you as Dorian are at this stage already, at that stage of maturity of having this subpopulation of your audience that's ready to move on to the next step. And it, I'm sure it takes time to get them there and, and a lot of hard work on everybody's side. The uh, influencer, creator, streamer space, obviously I have been getting a lot of coverage and a lot of attention from, from the industry and from individual game developers. What guidance would you give a, a gaming company who doesn't have any UGC component to it who, uh, and or doesn't work with creators in any shape or form? What advice would you give them as to how to they may potentially best engage and, and utilize the power locked up in that creator space? Yeah, collaborate with us. It's very easy uh, to do so. Shameless uh, self-promotion, right? We are... Uh, a good platform for any 
game studio or uh, IP holder to learn how to co- how to tap into the ind- independent creator space, how to work with influencers, because it's very easy to get started on our platform. You can test various storytelling and UGC ideas very quickly. Just to give you an idea, most of our creators uh, make an episode in one day. Um, and uh, in general, with all of the checks and um, iterations and editing, people produce high quality episodes with a lot of brain chain in one week. So most of the creators are on weekly uh, release schedule for their series. And it's ex- it's extremely easy to get started and to start learning. Your learning cycles are very fast compared to anything else. Just spoke to a development studio this week and they said that uh, it's taking them to produce their game two years. They are planning to release a game in two years and it's uh, a very good fit for our platform. So it's basically comparative because of the expectations that it should be a complete game. Whereas what we recommend and what really works the best for the medium is to have serialized um, series where you release um, at least like weekly episodes and you can learn so much more. You basically your go to market. This can be one week. And then when it comes to your question about developers, what they can learn, I would say in our case, we have a primarily female and queer creator population and fan uh, population. The, these creators are definitely underrepresented in the games industry. I still see that a lot of the media, both in games and outside of games, is produced by men or f- male writers. And you can see male gaze coming through. Whereas in our case, it's amazing to see this uh, female and queer gaze in storytelling. It is very different. It's much more authentic. You can feel as a a female consumer myself, I can see the difference and how many voices, how much new content you can see that people have been looking for but could not find in uh, the games uh, space. So I think that uh, by working with us or creators uh, on our platform, people can just learn so much about authentic um, view on um, on their games or on their IP if they open it up for creators. Our uh, platform allows you to upload your art and lore and some whatever limitations you want to apply and let the community use this IP officially for creating their own fun games. We had collaboration like that with multiple partners already, including Lionsgate, um, Blair Witch, and AMC's interview with the Vampire, and some other partners. And uh, people always um, get uh, surprised by all of this creativity and uh, thinking that they didn't expect, but usually it's for the better. If you are open-minded, you can learn so much. And also, I would like to mention cosplayer population. You asked about influencers and cosplayers. We have many of them on the platform. We enable them to make games that cosplayers have been dreaming about for years in many cases. And actually, surprisingly, we learned that cosplayers make some of the best game creators. They have been cosplaying characters for years. Now they understand how to make iconic characters, how to design uh, these characters for, again, for female and queer uh, fantasies. And it's just like this level of authenticity and like raw talent is extremely appealing for uh, the audience. All of the, sometimes like this kind of over editing and over polishing makes studio content lose this this appeal. Julia, do you mind sharing how many creators you have on the platform now? Overall, we've got around seven and a half thousand 
active creators who have pre released something on Dorian and they released close to 10,000 games and growing. And cosplayers can cosplay their favorite characters right next uh, to the gameplay of these characters and fans usually go wild about it when you can see a favorite character and the cosplayer dressed like them. And it's a very big trend worldwide, uh, especially in Asia that uh, women and queer people are looking for these uh, fantasy relationships in, in stories, in manga, in anime, and they, they look to interact with these characters because they are just more um, adapted for um, your taste and they, they're just, it's a safe space, right? You can express yourself, your fantasies as much as you want. And there is also a big trend of um, female and queer cosplayers uh, cosplaying th these characters, often male characters, and fans um, actually liking to go on real virtual dates with these cosplayers, again, because it's so much safer and it's just like perfectly fitting your female queer fantasies that you do not get elsewhere and uh, it's just um, a really rewarding experience for the community and this is what we see happening on dorian where these creators can not only cosplay and stream but they can also turn their original characters into games given how fast your creator community has grown and given how how large is, is the content collection already how are you thinking as a platform about discoverability for your creators? Um, I think it's a, a challenging question for any platform. And this, uh, this is something that is always evolving for us. So we are, uh, we're always looking for uh, more ways to help our creators get discovered. I think that ultimately we want to have as much personalization as possible. And uh, we are definitely envisioning using AI for this um, as we are growing. Um, we do have a lot of proprietary data to help us with this, and we are experimenting with some projects. So, for example, we have all of these choices, right, that people are making, and choice, choices that you're making, especially if these are premium choices, pattern-only choices, they can give a very strong signal of what kind of content a person wants. So we are um, already um, flirting with this and uh, thinking how to uh, build um, smart discovery systems. At the moment, um, there are many ways how a person can get discovered and share their content. First of all, you can, all of your content is listed directly under your profile. So you can share your, the link to your profile. And uh, even with the mobile download, fans can um, download the app and be directed directly to this profile by passing any onboarding and so on. Uh, you can get people to follow you and uh, when you produce new content, followers get uh, push notifications and in some cases emails. You can also make a web version of your game and share. We have we built this tool fairly recently. You can build like a web demo that allows to play uh, a demo without downloading and then decide whether or not uh, you want to continue. Uh, so we are constantly thinking about this and uh, looking into this. And of course, uh, there is research, there is, there is a tagging system. So that's always on the forefront of our mind. What's success for Dorian? Immediate plans and vision for the future? We are working uh, on um, uh, several interesting projects. We are, um, we are currently seeing that um, some of the most uh, popular games are um, visual novels, Otome games. Otome games are games with usually female lead who has uh, different relationship options. We see a lot of interest in dating simulators. Again, like when you have options to pursue different relationships and overcome uh, different obstacles. So it's 
it's a combination of storytelling and uh, points-based systems mm -hmm. where you whatever decisions you make they can uh, unlock different content different opportunities and uh, that's that's what we're working on with um, multiple creators and also developers we are uh, looking to partner with any developers and ap holders who want to expand their fandoms we see fantastic results when developers and ap holders are using dorian as a companion for their fandoms um, especially when these are single player games which many of the narrative based games are there is no way to interact dorian is highly social People can connect with each other, fans can connect with each other, IP holders can have a dedicated chat for their fandom on Dorian, they can have dedicated streams, they can tap into our influencer and cosplayer community and get their characters cosplayed. So we are definitely looking to work with more IP holders and help them unlock the take their fans to the new level, turn them into creators because they can also tap into fan games produced on Dorian. So that's uh, some of these partnerships is what we're look uh, looking for and working on uh, at the moment. We are announcing uh, a workshop uh, at GDC uh, that um, is uh, focused on dating sim mechanics for female and queer demographics. We're going to share a lot of data uh, at this workshop, it's going to start at 1 p.m. on uh, March 19, um, and it's free. Uh, everyone who gets approved is, is welcome. We would love to see developers who are interested uh, to work with uh, cosplayers and um, female fans uh, and join our platform. Uh, by the end of this workshop, we expect that uh, developers who join will release their first episode and immediately during the workshop, it will be streamed by some of the most popular cosplayers in the world. We already have some commitments from uh, cosplayers with over a million fans. So um, that's a great opportunity to see your game streamed by amazing cosplayers right away. Looking into the future, what are you most excited about uh, in the gaming industry now? I am really excited about the efficiencies introduced by AI. I think that the most interesting applications for us are discovery and marketing opportunities. We already see some fantastic results with uh, the AI tools introduced by uh, ad channels. And it's, it's really exciting to see that. In our case, we're looking to build AI systems uh, using our proprietary data to help creators produce better content. So basically help them fight uh, writer's blog, help them analyze their data more easily using AI and uh, using the writer copilot project. Uh, so that's, that's definitely a big trend that we love. And then of course, I'm personally very much on a mission to unlock so much more content by working with individual creators and democratizing access to the games industry for them. As I mentioned, it's, this is my passion. We already see so much engagement with the UGC and we know that engagement is all, always followed by monetization. I love seeing individuals bringing their vision into life and then turning this into a business. As you mentioned yourself, for example, Roblox is a great example of this when some of the studios now are working on Roblox started by former kids playing Roblox. And uh, I see the, this, the parallel on Dorian when like, you know, you just engage with content and I imagine this was the case with Roblox. Um, you engage with content, you understand how the platform works. And then in a few years, you're like looking around, oh, actually I can build something using this. I can build a team around me. We see kind of the same, some of our best creators so far as they have been um, around and Dorian for say, for let's say a year, looked around, tried different things, and then they started getting real traction because they 
a sort of na native to the platform and uh, we are evolving and growing together with them. So all of these voices uh, reaching their um, fans is something that I'm extremely excited about. And uh, we are proud to be one of the platforms to unlock this. Awesome. Julia, thank you so much for, for speaking with me today. Really enjoyed the conversation and, and bringing the company and what you guys are doing to the world a bit more. Uh, look forward to seeing you at GDC and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Enjoyed talking to you. Thanks for listening to us. We'll be back next week. Thanks, Thanks, for, Thanks for listening. listening.